as I have, so have you mine. And we shall talk before we fight. Most meet that first we come to words, and therefore have we before us our written purpose assent, which if thou hast considered, let us know if twill tie up thy discontented sword and carry back to Sicily much tall youth that else must perish here. To you all three, the senators alone of this great world, chief factors for the gods, I do not know wherefore my father should revenges want, having a son and friends. Since Julius Caesar, who at Philippi the good Brutus ghosted, there saw you laboring for him. What was that move, pale Cassius, to conspire? And what made the all-honored, honest Roman Brutus with the armed rest, courtiers of beauteous freedom, to drench the capital? But that they would have one man, but a man. And that is it hath made me rig my navy, at whose burden the angered ocean foams, with which I meant to scourge the ingratitude that this spiteful Rome cast on my noble father. Take your time. Thou canst not fear us, Pompey, with thy sails. We'll speak with thee at sea. At land thou knowest how much we do o'ercount thee. At land indeed thou dost o'ercount me of my father's house. But since... The cuckoo builds not for himself. Remain in it, as thou mayest. Be pleased to tell us, for this is from the present, how you take the offers we have sent you. There's the point. Which do not be entreated to, but rather weigh what it is worth embrace. And what may follow to try a larger fortune. You have made me offer of Sicily, Sardinia, and I must rid all the sea of pirates then to send measures of wheat to Rome. This greed upon to part with unhacked edges and bear back our targes undinted. That's our offer. That's our offer. Know then, I came before you here, a man prepared to take this offer. But Mark Antony has put me to some impatience. Though I lose the praise of it by telling you must know that when Caesar and your brother were at blows, your mother came to Sicily and did find her welcome friendly. I have heard it, Pompey, and I'm well studied for a liberal thanks, which I do owe you. Let me have your hand. I did not think, sir, to have met you here. Oh, the beds in the east are soft, but thanks to you, that brought me timelier than my purpose hither, for I have gained by it. Since I saw you last, there is a change on you. Well, I know not what Count's harsh fortune casts upon my face, but in my bosom shall she never come to make my heart her vassal. Well met here. I hope so, Lepidus. Thus, we are agreed. Aha! I crave our composition may be written and sealed between us. There's the next to do. We'll feast each other ere we part, and let's draw lots who shall begin. Oh, that were I, Pompey. Oh, no, Antony, take the lot. But first or last, your fine Egyptian cookery shall have the fame. I have heard Julius Caesar grew fat with feasting there. You have heard much. I have fair meaning, sir. And fair words to them. Then so much have I heard, and I have heard Apollodorus. Uh, no more of that. He did so. What, I pray you? A certain queen to Caesar in a mattress. I know thee now. How fares thou, soldier? Well, and well I'm like to do, for I perceive four feasts are toward. <laughs> Let me shake thy hand. I never hated thee. I have seen thee fight when I have envied thy behavior. Sir, I never loved you much, but I praised ye when you well deserved ten times as much as I've said you did. Enjoy thy plainness, and nothing ill becomes thee. Aboard my galley, I invite you all. Will you lead, lords? Show us the way, sir. Come. Thy father, Pompey, would ne'er have made this treaty. You and I have known, sir. At sea, I think. We have, sir. You've done well by water, and you by land. I will praise any man that will praise me, though it cannot be denied what I've done by land. Not what I have done by water. There's something you can deny for your own safety. You've been a great thief by sea. 
And you by land? Therein I deny my land service. <laughs> well, give me your hand, Venus. <laughs> if our eyes had authority here, they might take two thieves kissing. All men's faces are true, what's a mare their hands are. <laughs> but there's never a fair woman had a true face. No slander? They steal hearts. <laughs> we came hither to fight with you. For my part, I am sorry it is turned to a drinking. Pompey doth this day laugh away his fortune. If he do, sure, he cannot weep to back again. You have said, sir. We look not for Mark Antony here. Pray you, is he married to Cleopatra? Caesar's sister is called Octavia. True, sir. She was the wife of Caius Marcellus. She's now the wife of Marcus Antonius. Pray you, sir. That is true. Then is Caesar and he forever knit together. If I were bound to divine of this unity, I would not prophesy so. I think the policy of that purpose made more in the marriage than in the love of the parties. I think so too. <laughs> but you shall find the band that seems to tie their friendship together will prove the very strangler of their amity. Octavia is of a holy, cold, Still conversation. Who would not have his wife so? <laughs> not he that himself is not so, which is Mark Antony. He will to his Egyptian dish again. Then shall the sighs of Octavia blow the fire up in Caesar. And as I said before, that which is the strength of their amity shall prove the immediate author of their variance. Antony will use his affection where it is. He but married his occasion here. And thus it may be. <laughs> Come, sir, will you aboard? I have a health for you. I shall take it, sir. We have used our throats in Egypt. <laughs> Come, let's away.